This is R2D Tech and we're back again with another video today, this time about the Librem 5 phone from Purism, so stay tuned. So if you don't know, Purism is a company that makes devices that usually run a Linux based operating system. Um, and their main focus is, is really promoting privacy on these devices, um, which is a pretty good thing. And they've just come out with their latest product, which is a phone called the Librem 5. Um, and we're gonna take a look at it today. So the Librem 5 is a bit of a weird phone. It's, it's clear that the main focus here is privacy as well as transparency. Um, and there have definitely been some corners cut and sacrifices made to achieve those goals, which we'll definitely talk about later. Um, however, the one thing that hasn't changed from most other modern smartphones out there is the price. It, it comes in at a hefty $800, which is a, pr a pretty heavy price tag. Um, so we'll have to see if it's worth it or not. So in terms of design, um, it is a pretty simple design. Uh, it, it's basically pretty much all plastic. There's a plastic removable back cover so you can access the battery and some of the other components, which we'll definitely talk about later. And then there's a glass front with some pretty sizable um, bezels sandwiching the screen. Um, so not the most modern design out there. Um, however, that's not really the aim of this phone. So um, not really that much to complain about there. The phone, however, is quite quite a lot chunkier than most modern smartphones out there. It's, it's pretty much almost twice um, the width of maybe even the iPhone. So, so definitely not the slimmest phone out there either. Um, then for specs, uh, firstly for the processor, and I'm gonna have to read this off of a page, it's the NXP IMX 8M quad-core Cortex A53 processor. So probably not a processor that many people have heard of, um, and probably not gonna provide as much performance as uh, some of the other mainstream smartphones out there either. Then for RAM, you're only be gonna be getting three gigabytes of RAM. For storage, it's 32 gigabytes with um, an external S uh, S micro SD card reader um, for some external storage if you want it as well. And finally, for the battery, it's gonna be a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty sizable. So overall, not the most impressive specs out there um, and definitely it's, it's not gonna meet the performance of the newest iPhones or phones from Samsung. However, one thing I should mention is that the iPhones um, run iOS and the Android phones out there run Android, which are both pretty heavy operating systems compared to what the Librem 5 is running, which is a Linux distribution which in comparison is incredibly lightweight. So that is one thing to bear in mind is that um, in day-to-day -day performance, just scrolling through uh, apps or scrolling through the OS, you shouldn't see much of a difference. However, you will see the difference if you want to use some more intensive apps uh, like playing games or anything like that. So just one thing to bear in mind. What's nice uh, about the Librem 5 is that the battery for once in a modern smartphone is removable as well as the Wi-Fi card being replaceable as well. So that, that's a pretty nice feature, I would say. It means that you can uh, replace the battery in the future um, when uh, you see your battery life decreasing, which is just a nice thing. Also, uh, the screen is also not that impressive. It's a 5.7 inch IPS display um, with a resolution of 720 by 1440 pixels. So not the sharpest or largest display out there. Um, so also not too impressive. So let's move on to pro probably one of the biggest drawbacks or benefits of this phone, depending on how you see it. And that's the operating system. So the Librem 5 is running pure OS, which is a Linux-based operating system. 
um, with a desktop environment called GNOME. Now, if you don't know what Linux is, it's a family of free and open source operating systems developed by a community of uh, developers all around the world. So there's no one company developing um, a Linux based distribution, um, unlike iOS or Android. Now, Android is actually technically a distribution of Linux, but it's been incredibly specialized um, by Google with layers of software added on top. In comparison, PureOS is a pretty bare bones version of Linux. And there are certain benefits as well as some drawbacks um, to that. So firstly, the benefits. Number one is privacy. Whereas on Android and iOS, um, even though iOS claims to be a very private operating system, your data is constantly being sent to Apple and Google. In comparison, PureOS doesn't send any data anywhere because there isn't really anyone to send it to. No one is going to benefit from that data because um, it is a free operating system. Number two is that um, it's incredibly lightweight compared to those other operating systems, which means that the phone should run good as new a few years down the line, which is always a nice thing compared to Android phones, which seem to just get quite slow over time. Number three is that bug fixes will happen much faster. So if there's um, a glitch on an Android phone or an iOS phone, Google or Apple has to have a team of developers fixing that. So only a handful of developers will probably be doing that at the time. Whereas on uh, a Linux based operating system, because it's open source, any developer out there can fix it at any time. Um, so a, a fix could come overnight, whereas it will probably come over a few weeks for Android or iOS. So there are definitely some uh, really good benefits to having a free and open source operating system. However, there are definitely some drawbacks as well. So the biggest one, in my opinion, is the lack of an app ecosystem. So on iOS and Android, you have an app to do basically anything you want to do. Whereas on these Linux based operating systems, there just isn't that selection. Um, and I'd say the main reason for this is because at the end of the day, developers of apps want to make money. And the most popular way of doing that is by collecting user data, selling it to advertisers so they can target ads um, towards you on that app or someone else's app. Now, iOS and Android have pretty relaxed rules on collecting user data, although they are getting much stricter now, especially um, iOS. However, Linux based operating systems have much stricter rules on collecting data, um, as well as the software being open source as well. So this brings a number of problems. Uh, number one is that developers don't want to develop apps for Linux operating systems because it's much harder to make money. And number two is that most apps published on Linux based operating systems have to be open source as well. Now, so for example, uh, the Facebook app is a closed source app, meaning no one has access to the source code, but the Facebook company. Now, if it was an open source app, someone else could just clone all of the code and republish a different app without the targeted advertising, which would uh, completely screw up Facebook as a company. So obviously, they're not going to do that. And therefore, they're not going to publish their app on a Linux based operating system. So there are definitely some hurdles to jump over for app developers on Linux. And until that changes, uh, I think it's going to be difficult to see Linux as a mainstream operating system for many people. So let's talk about the actual usability of the operating system now. And overall, I'd say it feels quite a lot like Android. Uh, a lot of features are the same, for example, pulling down the menu bar to access the settings, as well as having an app drawer and home screen. So it all pre feels pretty familiar. However, 
it just doesn't feel as polished as the mainstream operating systems yet. Um, it still feels like something that you would use on a laptop or desktop machine, which is another reason why I think Linux-based operating systems haven't become mainstream, apart from obviously Android. Now, there is a lot of customizability. You can change the entire um, desktop environment if you want from GNOME to something else, which is always a nice thing to have. I believe that customizability should be a big feature on phones. If you are a developer, it's also nice to see that you have access to all of the source code to the apps and the operating system, which is also a nice thing. So looking around the phone, you will see that you do get one USB-C port for charging the phone, as well as a headphone jack and uh, three kill switches, which kill the Wi-Fi, the cellular connection, and the microphone and camera. If you kill all three at once, you also kill the GPS um, to the phone. So once again, definitely a focus on privacy here. Um, which is always nice. Quickly for cameras, you are getting a back facing 13 megapixel um, camera and a front facing eight megapixel camera, um, which probably won't be as impressive as again, the iPhones or the Samsungs out there, um, but it, it should do the job. So looking at the phone on paper, you're getting a plastic phone uh, below average specs, a lack of apps, all for $800. It just definitely doesn't seem worth it for most people. However, if you really do want a phone that's entirely focused on privacy and being free and open source, then I guess that's the price that you have to pay. That's it from this video. If you liked it, please press the thumbs up button. If you loved it, please consider subscribing.